Hello everyone, welcome. This is Steve Suffolato from Erie Community College, just south of Buffalo, New York. Today what I'd like to do is compare traditional printing with digital printing. And let's look at the various topics here. And we know that for the printing processes, traditional printing would be letterpress, screen printing, flexography or flexo, gravure, sometimes called rotogravure, and offset lithography both sheet fed and web, both cold set and heat set. Digital printing would be laser toning using electrophotography, EP, or xerography. Digital printing would also be inkjet, whether it be continuous inkjet or drop on demand. So one way to classify a printing process is by its image carrier or the plate. And in traditional printing, yes, you do need a plate. So you have to make the plate, uh, which is labor and materials. In letterpress, it's called a plate. In screen, it's called a screen. Flexo is a plate. Gravure is a cylinder. And also lithography is a plate. However, in digital printing, you do not need a plate. So one of the most basic definitions of a printing press is whether or not you need a plate or not. So we've had some previous conversations about the differences between a copier, a printer, and a press and we said if there's a scanner on it to scan an original to digitize it to make the copy it's called a copier if there's no scanner and you just have a file you can output to a printer and a printing press would need a plate so in this table here i have some fields highlighted in green the green is to suggest that it is an advantage or a benefit or a pro now let's talk about make ready set up changeover for a register in color. Yes, on a traditional conventional printing press, yes, you have to get the register and the color to fit. Yes, you need material and labor to get the register to fit and get the color to match. So this takes time and materials. On digital, no, because when you hit that print button, the very first print out should be in theory in register and the color should be matching. When it comes to ink, most traditional printing processes use an ink that is either a wet paste or it's a fluid liquid. We have to worry about those inks drying. And if they're still wet, uh, they may mark or they may have set off. On digital printing, toner is dry uh, because it'll fuse. And inkjet being a liquid will very rapidly dry because the paper is very absorbent and it'll be absorbed into the paper fibers. Another comparison between traditional and digital printing is wash up. Because we're using wet inks, yes, you have to wash up the press, but on digital, no, there is no wash up. So one of the reasons why students don't really like the press lab is because the last half hour to 45 minutes is dedicated to washing up the press, getting the ink off the rollers, cleaning a plate cylinder, cleaning a blanket cylinder, cleaning the impression cylinder, clean up the wash up blade and all those types of things. Another comparison would be substrate. Now, traditional typically can print on any type of substrate, whether it be coated paper or uncoated paper, plain. If it's coated, whether it be a gloss coated or a matte dull coated paper, it can print on thin papers, three or four thousandths thick, up to thick paper boards, card stocks, cover stocks, 10 point, 12 point, 14 point, things like that. Now with digital, the toner is less of an issue, but the inkjet may be an issue because inkjet may need a special pre-treatment so that the fluid liquid inkjets will dry on the top surface without any marking. Another comparison would be the size of the device. So traditional presses can be larger. For the commercial sheet fed market, it's typically a 40 inch press, which is eight up so eight eight and a half by 11s which would give you a 16 page signature front and back for digital prior to 2020 i would say that most devices were only a3 so they were small now a3 is 11 by 17 or 12 by 18 or 13 by 19 so it's two up so you can make a four page signature with a single half fold or a bifold now, after the year 2020, we're starting to see larger digital devices 
fit into the B2 category. And B2 is 20 by 28, which is very close to a 29 inch traditional press. One of the biggest differences between traditional and digital is speed. Now the Ryobi 2800s and the Ryobi 3302s that we have in the press lab, the maximum speed is around 10,000 sheets per hour. But a real true printing press sheet fed, the production speeds are somewhere as near 18, 19, or 20,000 sheets per hour, with web presses being even faster than that. When we come over here to digital, they're much slower. So I think our Rico is rated at 60 pages per minute for 8.5 by 11 letter, A4. And I think that's only for simplex, not for duplex. So some digital devices, in order to duplex, they have to turn the piece of paper over, and that will slow the machine down by 50% or one half. You really can't talk about digital printing speeds unless you talk about the effects that sheet size, number of colors, and simplex versus duplex has on the output speeds. Another comparison we can make is run length or quantity. So most traditional printing presses are best suited for long runs. Thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, perhaps even millions of pieces. Where digital printing presses are best suited for shorter runs. Dozens, several dozens, maybe hundreds, or a few hundred copies. Well, most companies are in business to make a profit. So we have to talk about crossovers, break-evens, and the economy, the cost and the price. So I think most analysis I've seen has said that if you're going to do 2,000 or more, it's more economical because of economy of scale to print on a traditional printing press. That economy of scale is a curve, meaning that the more you print, the lower the cost per piece because you're spreading the fixed make ready cost over more pieces. When you come over to digital, it's a fixed cost, so the, there is no curve, it's just a flat line. So you're paying a click charge no matter what. So if it's 2000 or less, it's probably more economical to do it on a digital printing press. So just think about the market share for 2000 or less. Most customers only want 2000 or less business cards, envelopes, stationery, letterheads, folders, brochures, pamphlets, postcards. So this is a large part of the market. When it comes to proofing, traditional printing presses have to have either a hard copy or a soft copy proof from pre-press. However, with a digital printing press, a single copy of one off the production press is your proof. And you know you're going to be able to match it because everything is the same. It's the same production device, the same substrates, the same colorants, the same media, etc. So you know you have a matchable product. Let's talk about turnaround time and scheduling. I think if you walk into most sheet head commercial printers and ask them to, to print something, they'll ask for several or many days to turn things around. I remember back in the late 70s and early 80s, a standard response was we need two weeks to, to turn this around. One of the advantages of digital printing is because it's so fast, or, or several reasons, like no drying, etc. We can typically turn something around the same day, come back at the end of the day, or come back in an hour, or wait 15, 20 minutes, and I'll give it to you right now. Variable data is an interesting conversation. As you know, in traditional printing, the plate is fixed, so it's static. That means Every revolution is exactly the same. You can't change it. However, with variable data, inkjet and laser toner, every revolution can be different. You can change the data. So we call this VDP or variable data printing. Now, while this sounds like a great thing, and it is, it's not used extensively. Some research I've read has stated that only 10% of digital devices are being used for variable data printing. If you're going to just use it for static images, uh, then you might want to consider going back to the traditional printing press. When it comes to colors, traditional printing presses can print any spot color you want out of the Pantone book. So I don't know, there's maybe 2,500 colors in the Pantone book right now. 
and you have all the metallics, the 877 silvers, the golds, the bronzes. You have all the fluorescents or the neons. Uh, so we can print anything with a traditional printing press. When it comes to digital, you're probably, for electrophotographic EP, xerography, laser, limited to just four colors, the, the process, process colors, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Now we are starting to see a trend where toner devices are giving you the option for a fifth color, but that's usually used for like opaque white on clear films or metalized silver papers, or they're using that fifth unit for some type of clear transparent uh, coating that gives you a gloss, dull, matte, or perhaps uh, a simulation of embossing. Color bit depth, we know that traditional printing presses are single bit binary devices, meaning you either have image error or non-image error, black ink or white paper. Uh, the only exception there would be uh, gravure where you can vary the cell depth. When you vary the cell depth, you can change the ink film thickness so it can be multi-bit. On digital devices, you can be multi-bit, therefore you can do grayscale, meaning each droplet of inkjet that is sprayed out of the nozzle head can vary the number of drops to give you various intensities or shadings or tones. Uh, the same thing is true with, with electrophotographic. If I vary the voltage, I can give you more or less toner so I can build that vertical height to give you multi-bit depth. So when it comes to quality, and quality is a very subjective opinion, and quality has to be referenced to some time frame, today lithography is still used as the best gold standard, the benchmark for comparison. So digital is compared to offset lithography. So over time, the quality has improved for digital printing. So I can remember in 1993, when the first process production digital devices were introduced, the Zycon and the Indigo, the quality was fair compared to offset lithography. And then over time, it got better to good, better to same. And now you could argue in some cases that digital quality is better than traditional offset lithography. And when it comes to pressure, traditional printing processes have to have some type of a hard impact or impression, impress uh, to the substrate. We call this KISS impression. With electrophotography, it's a soft contact, so I wouldn't say it's a hard pressure impact or impress. And with inkjet, there is no contact at all. You're just spraying over fluid droplets to the substrate through air. And finally, let's talk about the skill level required, the amount of knowledge and the amount of experience you need. For traditional printing processes, that would be high. It takes many months, several months, maybe even years to learn how to print with traditional printing presses. In the old days when we had strong union presidents, you would have to go through a one or two year apprenticeship to become a master printer. With digital printing, the skill, knowledge, and experience required is much lower because typically once you push that print button, the first copy out is in register and to color. I don't want to say that you're a button pusher, but certainly it requires you to push a button. And then finally, no single printing process can do everything for everyone every time. That's why we have choices. So the selection or the choice will depend on many factors, such as the cost, the scheduling, the quality, the quantity, the size, the substrate, the colors, the image, uh, the quantity, and etc. And quality is certainly a very subjective opinion. Quality depends on the expectations of the market and the customer. Just think about packaging versus the newspaper industry. Uh, so this table is a generality table. It's not specific detailed to one specific market or industry. There are always going to be special exceptions. So the other thing you also have to consider is performance uh, is time dependent on the maturity and the technology. And digital color print production devices were introduced in 1993 by Indigo and Zycon. Letterpress was introduced in 1440 by Gutenberg, movable type. Lithography was created in 1800 and then the offset process was created in 1900. So as usual, I hope you found this presentation interesting. 
informative, and I hope you enjoyed it, and hope to see you soon. Bye now.